goodness, we made it to the lesson where you'll finally create web automation. We need a package to write web automation just like we needed the PyTest package to write automated tests. We will be using Pylenium, which is a tool I created specifically for web automation in Python. It's a wrapper of Selenium WebDriver, hence the name Pylenium. Selenium WebDriver is the most popular automation tool in the world and one you need to know as an automation engineer. It has a version for all of the major languages like JavaScript, Ruby, Java, C Sharp, and others, and is included as a requirement in 90% of the job postings for testers. For automation engineers, it's 100% required. In this course, we won't be diving into the internals of these tools, but we'll use the selectors we learned in the previous lesson to program tests that will automatically walk through websites and test them for us. We're basically building robots for the web. So let's start by installing and setting up Pylenium, and then we'll write our first test. First, create the Chapter 5 branch and the Chapter 5 directory like we always do. Chapter 5. There we go. Right-click Chapters, New Directory, Chapter 5. Then, we need to install the Pylenium package. Open the integrated terminal and install the package with pipenv. pipenv install Pylenium IO. This may take a while, so feel free to pause the video until yours is done installing. But once installed, all that's left is to initialize Pylenium into the project. We do that with Pylenium init. This creates files at our project root, so click into your project somewhere and you'll see these get added. The only one you need to be aware of right now is the pylenium.json file. This is a configuration file. Configurations are kind of like settings, so you can edit these values to change how Pylenium works. For example, the default browser is Chrome, but you can only automate a browser if you have that browser application installed. You can change this value to something else, so besides Chrome, you could do something like Firefox, or maybe you want to go against Edge. But again, make sure you actually have those browser applications installed if you want to test against them. For now, I'll leave this as Chrome. Under Chapter 5, create a new test file called Test Google Search. We'll write the test here. Like the file name suggests, we're going to test the infamous Google search. I created a google.feature file, but here's the scenario. Entering a search displays a results page. Given I am on Google search, when I search puppies, then I see the puppies results page. We could easily turn this into a scenario outline with multiple search examples, but our puppies test will be good enough for now. So let's get this going. We start a UI test like any other automated test by defining a test function. So def test search for puppies. The biggest difference is that we will be passing in Pylenium this time. And you do that with PY. From there, we can immediately use Pylenium to start writing commands against the browser. The first thing we want to do is navigate to google.com. We can do this with the visit command. pi.visit, and then pass in a string containing the URL. google.com. 
When you type pi dot, you see a list of commands you can use with Pylenium against the browser. Now that we're on Google search, we need to type the word puppies into the search field. But we need to find it first. In our browser, let's go to google.com. And now we'll inspect the search field. And whoa, that's a big element. As I look through the element, I see that the element has an attribute with name and an attribute with title. Both of these are simple and unique. I'm going to use the name attribute in my selector. Okay, so inside the console here, I'll use CSS. And I want the element that has the name that equals Q. And there we go, we found it. Push up arrow in the console so we can see our selector again. And because we found it in the console, I'm very confident that this is going to work in Selenium. So I'm going to copy the whole orange bit from double quote to double quote, copy that, and switch back over to PyCharm. With Pylenium, to get an element on the page, we use the pi.get command. And then just paste in the selector. And that's it. You now have the search fill element in code. Okay, but we need to type puppies next. After pi.get, type a period again. And now we're shown a list of commands that we can do against the element. Since we want to type into the element, we'll use the dot type command. And pass in the word puppies. Next, we could click on the Google search button to submit the search, but I don't know about you, I don't actually ever do that. Usually I'll type what I want to search and then press enter or return on my keyboard. Remember, we want to simulate how users actually interact with the website. So let's do that. Instead of clicking the Google search button, we're just going to say puppies and then press the enter key. This is red right now, so let's import this and the error goes away. All right, the last thing to do is add our Oracle. In this case, when we land on a search results page, we'll check that the title of the page includes what we searched for. If it does, we can assume the search was successful. If not, then we want the test to fail. The title element exists inside of the head of the HTML. So let's minimize the body, open up the head, and if we scroll down a bit, here is the title. And the title is Puppies Google Search. So as long as the word puppies exists in the title, we know that our search was successful. Let's see how we can make that assertion in code. All right, back in our test, let's start with the assert keyword and then add the expectation. Our expectation is that the browser, Pi, should contain the title, Puppies. And we're all set. So let's run the test and see what happens. Say what? You just created a bot that did exactly what you programmed it to do to check that when we search for puppies, that a puppy search results page appeared. Isn't that one of the coolest things you've ever seen? Are you ready to give it a try yourself? On to challenge three. We'll use Swag Labs as the application under test, or AUT. I'll provide some requirements, but you need to create the feature file with scenarios defined in Gherkin like we've always done, and then write the automated tests to satisfy those scenarios. All right, here are the requirements. 
the user can log in with the valid username and password. The user cannot log in with an invalid username or password. And the user can log out. I'd recommend calling the test file something like testchallenge3.py, but you can call it something else like test swag login.py or something like that too. How you name things, how you structure things, and what you use as your oracle is entirely up to you. We'll move on to the next lesson when you're done. Good luck. Oh, and one more thing. If your automated tests run into a page like this, then you're experiencing a certificate error. You can solve that by passing in the ignore certificate errors option in pyloname.json, but the easiest solution would be to just remove the S from the protocol when you visit the website. The URL protocol is either HTTP or HTTPS, where HTTPS means that the browser sees it as a secure and trusted website. But don't worry, Swag Labs is trusted and commonly used for learning. Okay. Go get that challenge done already.